here we go. I was muted. <laughs> uh, so this is week four of our stress series. And today we're going to be talking about some journaling, self-care, and EFT. So EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Technique, otherwise known as tapping. And studies have shown that EFT can rapidly reduce the emotional impact of memories and increase that trigger physical and physiological distress. Research indicates that it may be useful for treating anxiety, depression, PTSD, and other issues that contribute to unhappiness and health issues. The EFT practice consists of lightly tapping on specific meridian points along the body while talking to yourself through different emotions or troubling situations. So one point is this karate chop point here above the eyebrow the temple, under the eye bone, under the nose, under the mouth, the collarbone, the under the eye and arm place is kind of a weird place, I think. I don't know if I ever hit it right. And then the top of the head. So the basic technique requires that you focus on a negative emotion um, at hand while using your fingertips to tap five to seven times on each of the body's meridian points. So I've done it a couple of different times. I've done it where you'd like need to do, like go through the whole motion or whatever. And then I've done it where you just do one point. So I, I don't know <laughs> which it is. So throughout the entire tapping sequence, you continue focusing on whatever that anxiety, the unresolved problem is and that unwanted emotion by basically saying the opposite or you know, so saying what it is, accessing the energy channels while processing the thoughts and feelings. So like, even though I'm under a lot of stress, I fully and completely love myself, even though I'm whatever it is, and you tap through those points a few times and just keep going. And I'll never remember the order. I don't know that it really matters <laughs> if you go through them, but saying these things out loud. So what I was going to share with you, and I may have to put it in the chat later, I was going to get it pulled up this morning and forgot. So starting, I think next week, there's like a summit that's all about EFT and tapping. So I'm going to do it. It's a free thing. I don't think I can watch every single video, but I'll tap into the ones, huh, pun intended. Um, I'll tap into the ones that kind of relate to me. Um, but it sounds pretty cool where they're going to kind of teach you how to do, you know, all this tapping, you're going to learn about it. And I think that's really interesting. I think it would be really ideal when I'm working with my clients. So I'm going to do that. So um, if I forget later today, remind me and I'll put it in our messenger chat, the thread for that um, event, because you can learn more about tapping and all of that. But that is one way to alleviate stress and the anxiety and that sort of thing. All right, so that was kind of left over from last week that we didn't get to, but we're gonna shift gears and talk a little bit about self-care and why it's essential for stress. So there is a lot of advice out there for relieving stress, as you know, because there's been lots of things that we've discussed over the last few weeks. Um, and really stress can vary depending on its source. So since there are so many different options available, right? Um, However, you know, I kind of feel like everybody has like, everybody throws out self-care. I feel it's like one of those things is like, just do self-care, just do self-care. But what does that really mean, right? Sometimes I wish I had a different term for it because <laughs> I think everybody thinks it's just manicures and pedicures, right? But it's so much more than that. Um, it's so important that you pay attention to your own needs and make health a priority and understand when you need a little bit more self-love. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about why self-care is so important for stress relief and exactly what it is. So the first thing to understand about self-care is that it comes in many forms. It might include activities and tasks that you never even associate with self-care. Um, in its essence, self-care is all about doing something for yourself and nobody else. It can be different for everyone. So while many people do feel that maybe reading a book or taking a bubble bath is self-care, it actually goes beyond these basic tasks. 
Self-care can mean making time to visit friends, exercising or going for a walk, eating a meal that you love or spending time with your pet. It's also really important to remember that self-care is not selfish. It's about being yourself as much as possible or only doing the things that benefit you. It's simply an act of being intentional to take good care of yourself, which everybody needs more of. So when you're dealing with a lot of stress and overwhelm in your life, you are in need of a mental break. So the first thing you should consider when you feel this way is adding in more self-care into your life. So while a lack of self-care might not be the reason why you have a lot of stress, it can be very beneficial with how you feel on a daily basis. It can help you take a step back, relax your mind and body and refocus your thoughts. This is going to keep you from just trying to stay busy and get as much done as possible. But actually, um, but when we're actually taking action that's intentional for ourselves, right? So this makes it to where every action you take, you know the objective instead of just staying busy. It's a common mistake how many people make already, or her are already under a lot of stress. So a lot of times, even when I'm working with clients, I'm like, okay, we need to set aside a specific time. We're gonna put it in our calendar. We're gonna set aside for a specific time every day for stress relief and for self-care. And what is that gonna be? And I literally kind of start just telling him, you've got to pick one of three. Because sometimes it's overwhelming. I'm like, you're either gonna do this, this, or this, which do you wanna do? And that's what you're gonna do. Um, and sometimes when people are under a lot of stress, they feel really guilty, or they feel like they shouldn't be doing these things for themselves you've got to break it down to that level and start to make it a priority. So if you aren't sure what self-care is or how you get started with it, just start small with a daily activity. Think about what you can do for yourself that helps your physical and mental health reduce stress and help you relax. Some daily activities that can be considered self-care include getting better sleep, relaxing, writing in a journal or a planner, spending quiet time to read, drinking more water, even just drinking enough water, right? I would even add in there taking our herbal supplements, eating healthy foods and exercising. The next thing you can do is to think about activities that help you bring about your senses. So think about your different senses that you can focus on, such as tasting, touching, listening, smelling, and seeing because each of these senses helps you remain calm and be more mindful through basic activities. So some examples might include listening to music, um, even whatever, like for me, like the sound of the ocean is really, really calming for me. And uh, maybe it's like listening to rain outside, you know, even you could just download these things and listen, running water, whatever is relaxing for you. Uh, maybe it's feeling the hot water and smelling the fragrance of a bubble bath, maybe even just essential oils that go along with that bath, getting a massage, watching flames in the fire in your living room, um, or just the feel of a soft blanket. You guys, I have a very specific pillow that I have to sleep with, <laughs> what sounds really silly, but I have to have this pillow, like it has to be this one. If something ever happens to it, I don't know what I'm going to do without my pillow. Uh, very simple activities can be considered self-care and so, and also allow you to tap into different senses in order to be mindful and start relieving your stress. So you can move beyond the basics. You can do anything for yourself that makes you feel happy and relaxed and that can be considered a self-care activity. So think about what you can do at home and outside of home going on a road trip or a vacation, having coffee with a friend, um, a date night with your significant other, and going to maybe a weekly art class can all be things that are great for self-care. Just remember that self-care is whatever you make it. It's um, something that helps you feel better, whether it's mentally or physically, and it's crucial when you're trying to reduce your overall stress and anxiety. So one thing I actually love doing is going to those paint things, you know, they, I don't know what they call them, like painting, like a paint and sip or like cocktails and whatever. Um, a friend of mine actually owned a local business where she comes to your house and does that. 
And I just find the act of painting super calming and relaxing. I am not good at it in any way, shape or form. These paintings look hideous, but I find it incredibly relaxing just to sit there and paint. Um, I actually find it really relaxing to paint a bedroom. <laughs> like, um, I don't like the taping off, but I actually find it really relaxing to do that. So what are some things like that that you can think outside the box that you're like, oh yeah, that is really relaxing for me or that is really enjoyable for me. So people who deal with a lot of stress understand the implications of it. You know what it does to your mental and emotional health, how it affects your physical health and what the repercussions are. You're fully aware that it can lead to feeling overwhelmed and like you can't handle your daily life. That it can lead to burnout and work issues and cause problems with your relationships and in your personal life. So if this sounds like you, don't just make it a daily habit where you go through the cycles of extreme stress, find a better way to manage it. And something that's really healthy and has lots of other benefits is actually writing about your stress and journaling it out. So I'm gonna talk about some ways that you can write it out and journal out your stress to finally take control of your life and stop living in a constant worry. Um, my therapist made me start doing this a couple of years ago and I'm like, oh, seriously, it's been super helpful. I was annoyed at, the, at first, but it's really helpful. So journaling is one of the best ways you can deal with stress. It provides so many benefits from you from allowing you to do a brain dump to helping you understand where your stress is coming from. If you find out later that you have stress that comes up or that comes, <clears throat> you can kind of go, that keeps kind of coming up. You can go to previous journal entries in, um, to help you kind of see what any similar patterns or kind of figure out where this is coming from. One of the things I'll even do is like, I'll have repeating dreams. And so I will write those down because I've kind of started to notice that they are usually signs to me. Like I have certain sign, like a certain dreams when I'm under a lot of stress. And then I can kind of look at, oh, you know, I've been having that every night for a week. Where do I need to look at my life and kind of reduce that stress? Okay. That this journaling can give you a way to like vent your worries and your frustrations without being a burden on someone else. Of course, I'm always a fan of everybody having a therapist when you need it, but um, you know, like if you only see your therapist every couple of weeks, this comes in very handy in between. I know from personal experience. So a brain dump provides a really easy way to get all of those thoughts, worries, concerns, and ideas out of your head and onto paper. And through this process, you can really de-stress a lot, even coming up with worries you didn't even realize you had. And it starts with helping you find clarity in your thoughts and your worries, and it helps you declutter your mind. All you need to do for a brain dump is just write whatever comes to your mind on a piece of paper. Doesn't need to be complete sentences, doesn't need to be spelled correctly. It could be just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. It could even be just like images, like you could draw like a picture or whatever, right? Whatever it is. So it's often referred to as a stream of consciousness journaling because you're just writing whatever comes to mind without being concerned about organizing your thoughts. So if your mind switches to a new subject, so does your journaling. So just keep writing until you feel like all of the main thoughts are out on paper. Um, while you can journal in any type of journal you have, you might wanna worry um, a worry journal that is usually for great for relieving stress. This is for somebody that like does a lot of worrying. You're just worried a whole lot. Um, this is something that you can write in when you're dealing with a lot of stress or just trying to work through something. And it helps keep your thoughts organized and makes it easier to go back and find a specific journal entry when you need to. You can also write about other mental health issues that you're experiencing, such as your depression or your anxiety and how it's affected. This is good to keep together with your anxiety or worry in a journal since they're frequently connected. So if you have like clinical depression, you know the depressive episodes will come and go. However, you may not realize that there's a link to depression and stress or understand your triggers until you start to write down the details, right? So frequently, you know, like I would track these things. 
So one year I tried to do a bullet journal and I decided it was too much work, but I would kind of track these things. Like how am I sleeping? How is my stress? How am I feeling with anxiety? Cause I used to deal with a lot of really, really high anxiety and have like panic attacks. Right. So when I was kind of tracking them in the moment, I may not have known, like, why am I having this now? But then as I was kind of tracking, I could be like, oh, so this and this and this was a trigger for me. I could start to see those triggers where I couldn't see that before. And this was also really important for me to track these things, especially when I was first diagnosed with fibro, because then I was able to realize what my triggers were and even learn that stress is a trigger for me right, to have a flare up, right? So Oh, so that kind of goes to my next thing, this being able to track your triggers. Keeping track of triggers is one of the biggest benefits for journaling um, and for helping with stress, burnout, and overwhelm. You need to know why you're dealing with these experiences, not just when. The more detailed you are in each journal, the more you're gonna to start to see patterns. So it might be the same time of a week before the payday, it might be related to people or personal relationships and other things. So I would recommend this, like if you have headaches on a regular basis, start tracking them. If you have other things, because that's all somehow related to some kind of stress, physical or emotional stress, and you're gonna start to see these patterns. Like I said before, when I really started to track my fibro symptoms, I was able to say, okay, the weather affects this, being under a lot of stress affects this, this, you know, I was able to kind of track those triggers and kind of know when I flare. Um, but also, you know, I had chronic migraines to go along with this. I was able to kind of track those things too. And that was really kind of a key to help me start reducing because I could start reducing those triggers in order to reduce the symptoms. And so the same thing goes when we're kind of dealing with stress or whatever, because we've talked about what are the symptoms of stress, right? What are all the things that go along with it? And it's physical and it's emotional and there's lots of other things that go along with it. So tracking those different triggers is going to be really key to kind of seeing a reduction. And when you're writing in a journal, it can really help with stress and overwhelm. So try to write different times of day um, while morning or nighttime journaling is usually really useful where people can kind of set aside that time as a habit to do that. You might need to just sit down in the middle of the day for whatever reason and just start journaling things out to work things out, right? So if you have an, a stressful an event in the middle of the day and you need to have that journal nearby so that you can just write about it, like if your boss is being a jerk, you know, just get it out, get it out right now. So everyone experiences a certain level of stress at work. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, even though I think most of us work for ourselves, but I know some of you still work outside the home, but you're probably working with clients that work outside the home, right? Um, but I don't know, even not, like I still work for myself and still have stress in my job. So that's what we're gonna talk about. So everyone experiences a certain level of stress at work, which can't always be prevented. So you have projects to take care of, a team to manage and a lot of work to get done. So unexpected things can happen and curveballs come from every corner in some, some days, right? So while you aren't able to prevent the sources of your work stress, there are, are some ways that you can relieve your stress and still manage your work and other responsibilities without affecting you too much. So no matter what you do for a living, whether you're working in an office or outside or even at home, you need time to recharge. So think about what your biggest stresses are and get away from them at least a little bit every single day. So if you work from home, which most people are doing right now, your stress might be that you feel like whenever you're at home, you should be working. That's my problem. Um, so I have to have a boundary. If I start work, I end work, that's it. Um, so to recharge, you know, you may need to close the laptop, turn off the phone and get into a mindset of starting to take a break or being done for the day. Uh, you need to understand the difference between working and taking time for yourself. I will say that is probably the advantage of having Cameron home doing school with me is because obviously this kid needs a break and obviously he needs to um, like eat. <laughs> so I take a break when he takes a break. Um, 
even if it's just his little five minute dance breaks, I stand up and I do those with Cameron. And then when he eats lunch, I go down and do that. Cause it used to be that I work all day and all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, I got to get the kids from school. And I haven't had breakfast. I haven't had lunch. I've not eaten anything. Cause I would just get so into working. So my kids obviously need breaks. And so I've made it at a point that when he's on a break, I'm on a break and doing whatever he's doing on that break, snack, potty, dancing, movement, lunch, whatever it is. Um, so if you're trying to micromanage yourself and plan every single minute of every day, you're going to get overwhelmed and burnt out with work really quickly. So the stress that comes from having an entire day scheduled and planned out can be rough on you, even if you think you're doing a good thing. So having a schedule that is a plan is great for productivity, but if you are too strict with your schedule, it can create problems. So remember to have some flexibility in that schedule and alternatives for any moment when you need something else done or just take a little break for yourself. So one thing I do is like a six most important things list and I always rank them in order of the most important to least important. So if for some reason I don't get a couple of things done, those can roll over to the next day. So I have that flexibility, but I used to be like, nope, got to stay up till midnight to get all my six things done. Right. So, and you know, that wasn't healthy either. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about um, hacks for burnout and overwhelm. And all of these things are self-care, you guys. <laughs> it doesn't always seem like it, but it totally is. So when you're dealing with burnout or being overwhelmed, those can have consequences of high amounts of stress. So with overwhelm, you might be experiencing stress for a long time, which leads to you becoming overwhelmed with everything you were thinking and dealing with at the time. Burnout is similar. Though it's typical when it becomes, you become so exhausted physically and mentally that it can affect your work, your motivation, and your energy. So there are some hacks and tips to help you overcome some burnout and some overwhelm. So getting past your burnout, stress, and overwhelm always starts with your physical health. Not just because stress can affect you physically and actually make you ill, but because when you eat right and exercise, it can have a lot of good benefits. I mean, I know there's times where I've felt like so overwhelmed and burnt out, you know, that I'm like, I'm not even exercising. I'm not taking the time to cook or meal plan. I feel like everything needs to go into work or something else. And that's not a healthy balance either. Okay. So if you want a healthy mind, you need to start with a healthy body. And this means eating in a healthy, well-balanced diet with lots of fruits and vegetables and lean protein and whole grains, some regular exercise, and don't forget to drink a lot of water, right? So these small changes can make a big difference in your physical health, which will then help with your mental health as well. So everything is always about time. So making time for family, making time for work, looking at the clock every few minutes during the day, trying to get out of the house with enough time to spare, all of this focus on time, whether it's time you feel you've wasted, time you get stuff done, and feeling like your time is running out causes a lot of unnecessary stress. So there are certain aspects of life where time is relevant, such as maybe getting to an appointment on time, but you don't have to make your entire day around or revolved around time. It can be very overwhelming. Um, I have to wake up Cameron in a second. So, all right, pause for just a sec while I make sure Cameron's awake. I'll be right back. So when you have burnout, it can be hard to use standard stress relief methods. By this point, you're having trouble just getting to the bare minimum done, especially if you add in stress and overwhelm at the same time. So instead of putting too much pressure on yourself, just start slow. One good hack to use to be more mindful in the moment each day so during that moment, you can give yourself a few minutes to refocus your energy from a negative thing to a positive thing. Maybe you're in your office after a meeting that caused a lot of stress and tension. You can sit for five minutes and be mindful about something positive that you're feeling right now. This could be gratitude for this job or um, that you've worked so hard for, happiness for your family and friends, or just understanding that this stressful situation is over and now you can appreciate it and get through it. 
okay, here's my other biggie, not to work through lunch, which I used to do this all the time. <laughs> Stop working, right? Um, working more is not going to help you overcome burnout. Okay, you need a break. So your body and your mind need a rest. So if you work too much all week long, and then the weekend comes, you have no energy to enjoy the weekend. I just lost my notes. It just went all the way to the top. But I also used to work through the weekends, you guys. I would not stop for the weekends to rest. I'd work through lunch or I'm sitting there eating lunch and working at the same time, which is not good for our digestion. It's not good at all. So taking that time to stop and have proper lunch breaks, turning off your phone, making this mindful to relax is really helpful. Um, even when the kids were still in school last year, I took Fridays off. And that was my day. So I didn't work. That's usually when I go get my acupuncture or my massage um, for the week. I usually do every other week with those. I would go and get lunch somewhere, somewhere that I like that my kids would not eat, right? So I'd go wherever, Mad Greens or wherever I like, and sometimes just sit there by myself and enjoy lunch, or I'd eat lunch with a friend. I would come home and just relax and have that time to myself. And it was really, really fulfilling. Um, can't really do that now because my kids have school, so I'm still schooling them on Fridays. But in general, I don't see clients on Fridays. And so I'm just working with my kids. And when they're done, I'm done. And then we're just relaxing the rest of the afternoon. Um, and look for things in each day that make you feel positive and happy. This is going to encourage you to be more positive and have more positive energy which then can help you to relieve more stress and tension that you've been experiencing. Again, this is like unique for your situation and it can be related to your home, your job, people in your life, achieving your goals, um, having accomplished something that you put your mind to, being more physically healthy, um, just about anything, the sky's the limit. Start saying no. Are you a no person or a yes person? Because I was a yes person. I would feel so guilty saying no to anybody for anything, right? Even if you've always been the person that other people can count on to help them, you do not have to be everything to everyone. You have every right to say no to hosting a party, declining to go out on your only night off of, week, up, off of work this week, um, you could say no to doing a special project. You need to learn how to say no if you're already overwhelmed with all of your own responsibilities. This was really, really hard for me and took a really long time to do this, especially with certain people in my life. Um, I still sometimes struggle with the person that gave birth to me saying no to her, but I'm working on it. It's setting that boundary. But it's been really, really helpful for me to be like, no, I can't do that. And um, I used to have a really hard time. They'd ask me at church to do things all the time. And I'm like, but it's church. I can't say no, right? So that was really, really hard for me to learn to say no in order to take care of myself. So I would actually like to hear from some of you guys because we talked about some self-care today. And I've shared a little bit with you about some of these things that sometimes we don't think of as self-care that for me have been kind of vital over the last few years to reduce stress, like saying no, making sure I'm stopping to eat lunch on a daily basis, taking some breaks. But I'd like to kind of hear from you, a few of you just to be like, this is something that I do that has really helped me alleviate my stress, something out of the box or something maybe that we don't always think of, right? That's not just bubble baths and pedicures, which are nice, but. Do you want me to keep recording through this part? Um, no, I guess we can turn it off. 